Tonight on our news, some Maguana residents evacuate as Hurricane Fiona batters the Turks and Caicos Islands. A 14-year-old student charged with attempted murder. The details of the charge and what's next for the boy. Plus, the Saxon superstars get ready to defend their title as Junkanoo's season heats up. You'll see it on Just One Station. Welcome to our news and thank you for joining us. I'm Natalia Hall. As Hurricane Fiona continues to track north, officials are keeping a close eye on the storm that has wreaked havoc in parts of the Caribbean. Acting Prime Minister Chester Cooper and State Minister Miles Arota both say officials are not taking any chances on those southern islands as some Maguana residents were evacuated this morning. Marlena Leonard reports. Hurricane Fiona is now a Category 3 hurricane. And while we're only expected to get tropical storm force winds in the southeastern Bahamas, evacuations are already underway in some areas. The state minister who has responsibility for disaster preparedness, management and reconstruction says the outer bands of Hurricane Fiona are expected to impact some of the family islands in the south. For that reason, they decided to begin evacuations. That flight had five Marines along with uh, supplies for uh, residents in Maguana. There are some 21 persons to be evacuated. LaRota went on to say the people who evacuated were residents who may need special medical attention and were advised to evacuate by local doctors. As for those staying in Maguana, Acting Prime Minister Chester Cooper says, We've spoken with the island administrator and all of the local government officials as well as the doctor on the island of Maguana. Uh, they are going to remain on island and they anticipate that all will be well on the basis of the preparations that have already been made. Shelters have been opened and Bahamas Air was able to take in some supplies this morning in addition to what they received yesterday by mailboat. Hurricane Fiona has already caused devastation, killing two in Puerto Rico as well as mudslides and an additional death in the Dominican Republic. While Hurricane Fiona is expected to take a sharp northern turn, officials say it's important you please keep updated and informed. For more information, you can visit the Bahamas Department of Meteorology or the National Hurricane Center to keep up to date. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. Thanks, Marlena. Now the Turks and Caicos Islands receiving the brunt of Hurricane Fiona's fury today. Grand Turk and the Keys have already experienced heavy rain and gusting winds. Gusting winds, rather. Our Sasha Lightborn spoke briefly with a senior government official earlier today about conditions. Minister of Physical Planning and Infrastructural Development in the Turks and Caicos Islands, Akira Misik, speaking to our news team earlier today. The island went under lockdown over the weekend as the threat of Hurricane Fiona became eminent. We have begun our preparations and advisories to the people of these islands as early as Friday, when Fiona was just a tropical depression and moved into a category one. As of yesterday at 5 p.m., we issued a stay at home order to the islands in the eastern part of the Turks and Caicos being Grand Turk, Salt Key and South Caicos with a 7 p.m. stay at home order issued to the islands in the western part of the Turks and Caicos, being Providenciales, North Caicos, and Middle Caicos. Misik, whose portfolio includes the Department of Disaster Management and Emergencies, or DDME, explains conditions on Grand Turk. They did receive the brunt of the storm. They did experience eye conditions of rough weather, then calm weather, and the weather picked up again. Residents also experience island-wide power loss. Misik admonished Bahamians and locals to keep their guards up and seek safe shelter. Emergency services cannot, cannot initiate any rescue during the passage of the storm. You could get the videos for social media after the storm, but please do not put yourselves in risk just so you could get a few likes on Facebook and Instagram. Reporting for our news. I'm Sasha Lightborn. Thanks for that report, Sasha. Now the office of the Prime Minister releasing a statement this afternoon confirming that only 10 Maguana residents left the island today. Officials had initially expected 21 people to evacuate ahead of Hurricane Fiona. The OPM statement confirming accommodations for those Maguana residents will be handled by the administrator's office in Exuma until they are given the all clear 
to return. Prime Minister Philip Davis taking center stage during a New York Times panel discussion with World Bank and IMF officials this afternoon. PM Davis insisting climate change is no longer a threat, but a crisis. His appearance comes as many low-income countries believe more investment is needed to protect vulnerable countries from the impact of climate change and to build their resilience. Davis says more needs to be done to address the criteria for assessing the funds. They say I'm a wealthy country, but having had, having had what five hurricanes in the, in the last four or five years that ratcheted up my debt uh, right. to beyond a sustainable level. Why would you want to lend me more money to, 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 to make it more unsustainable for me? But I'm unable to move as quickly as I would like mm. because I have to be continually um, funding loss, damage, and servicing, and servicing debt. Residents in the southern Bahamas taking no chances as Hurricane Fiona brings heavy rains to some islands. Meteorologist Greg Thompson has the latest from the Weather Center. Greg? Yes, thanks, Dahlia. Of course, we are still tracking Fiona, which is out there, but current conditions outside our studios are still warm evening. Few clouds, your winds out of the north, northeast at 30 miles per hour. Those winds are picking up courtesy of uh, Fiona, which is just to the southeast of the Bahamas, mostly across the Turks and Caicos Island. Your face like temperature in the upper 80s. Satellite view, surface trough just to the north of the Bahamas is exiting the area, but we are still watching Fiona, which is basically across the Turks and Caicos Islands. A lot of showers and thunderstorms affecting that area. Well, some of that is also spreading across portions of the Southeast Bahamas, Inagua, Meguana, Acklands and Crooked Island getting in on some of that action as the system continues to lift towards the uh, north. Eventually, more rain bands will be spreading across portions of the Bahamas throughout the night and into tomorrow. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Thanks, Greg. And still to come on our news, a crackdown is coming to an area the police commissioner is calling a hot spot, where you can expect to see more police on the ground. And years of negotiations come to head as the Public Managers Union signs a new industrial agreement today. And Valley Fest brings you one step closer to junk news season. We'll tell you how when our news returns. Get that glorious internet connection back in business within seconds with the new self-help modem reset. Just follow these very easy steps. Step one, call 601-2200 or 242-300-2200. Number two, select option three. Step three, select option two. Step four, enter your eight digit account number. Step five, follow the prompts. It's really that simple. Rev, you and us together. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Aero. Aero is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Aero. So why is you streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Aero with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Aero from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash Aero or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. Police labeling the Dunmore Street area as a hot spot, with Police Commissioner Clayton Fernander promising more boots on the ground to curb increased criminal activity. The top cop also revealing bail violations remain a serious concern. Bertrand McDermott tells us more. Now, according to the police commissioner, 38 men were arraigned last week for serious crimes, all of whom he says were on bail and being electronically monitored. They are the individuals who continue to give us problems, we charge them, they charge firstly with the offense, 
they get bail and still continue to breach their bail. Something is wrong with that, ladies and gents. But we will not let that deter us. As they come, we will deal with them and put them back. Police Commissioner Clayton Fernando also telling reporters that officers are beefing up patrols in Dunmore Street after police recovered several firearms and made several arrests in the area. Over the weekend, three men opened fire on several men in that area. Two people were injured. Fernando says not only was the car recovered, it was also discovered it was involved in another incident. We also got physical evidence collected uh, from that scene, from that vehicle, which is connected uh, to the shooting death of the four-year-old who was shot at Dunmore Street. Officers found three loaded pistols in the vehicle. He added that another yard was searched in that area and 10 men were arrested for possession of a high-powered rifle. Our saturated patrols in hot spots Either we will catch the individuals in the act, it will be a shootout, because we know that these individuals have no respect for law and order. Police brought and displayed six of eight weapons recovered within the week. He says a task force focused on firearms trafficking will be ready within three weeks. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. A 14-year-old student at Anatole Rogers High School has been charged with attempted murder. The charge stems from the stabbing of another student, who is also 14, during a fight at the school's campus on September 12th. The teen, who cannot be named for legal reasons, was not required to enter a plea to the attempted murder charge when he appeared before juvenile court magistrate Cara Turnquest DeVoe. He was remanded into custody at the Simpson Penn School for Boys. The teen returns to court on December 13th to receive a voluntary bill of indictment. A man is facing a murder charge in connection with a fatal shooting earlier this month. 28-year-old Trevano Green of Carmichael Road appeared before Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt charged with the murder of 20-year-old Welgy Noel. Noel was shot multiple times on September 10th while at Cal's Close off Lazaretto Road. Green was not required to enter a plea to the charge. He was denied bail and is next due to appear in court on December 2nd to receive a voluntary bill of indictment that will send his case to the Supreme Court for a trial. 54 managers at the University of the Bahamas now have new benefits thanks to an industrial agreement between the university and the Public Managers Union. The agreement is for the period 2018 to 2023. Those negotiations wrapped up in December. President of the Public Managers Union, Cassandra Cartwright-Lewis, says it's a very good contract. We would have seen the development and in training in the financial, with regard to the finances, increased. The, a mentorship program for middle managers, a sab sabbatical for middle managers, and we would have in improved the grievance process. In, we have agreed to an increment, an increment administration, which we should be getting the results very shortly. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic is not putting a dent in enrollment numbers at the University of the Bahamas. In this report, the university president shares plans on the way forward. Jamila Mizek reports. Enrollment at the University of the Bahamas remains steady, a trend not seen at many other universities around the world where enrollment numbers have dropped because of the pandemic. That's according to University of the Bahamas president, Dr. Eric Rowland. We are at about 4,300 students as of today, and uh, that is uh, remaining flat at the moment. We are, we have a strategic enrollment plan in the works. That because of COVID, UB has ramped up online classes over the last two years. As for whether classes have resumed to fully face-to-face -face instruction, Dr. Rowland says they're exploring what's best based on the subjects. Where we can leverage face-to-face, -face, we will do that. Where we have to leverage, we will do so. When it comes to expanding, Dr. Rowland says students can expect the launch of additional graduate programs and certifications in order for persons to upscale and rescale. We are a world of continuous learning and lifelong learning. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jamila Misik. And when Our News comes back from the break, the Saxons taught their love for the culture and what's next for the reigning champs.
a look at what's going on with Mike Strawn and the Indianapolis Colts. They've struggled so far to get the season rolling. We'll also give you a preview of, or rather, details on Monday Night Football action. That's all coming up in sports. Sounds exciting, Marcellus. And who says John Canoe is just for the holidays? The upcoming Valley Fest connects culture and community. We have the details when our news returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Aero. Aero is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Arrow. So why is you're streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Arrow with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Arrow from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash arrow or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. This is our news. Welcome back. As we edge closer to the return of John Canoe parades, the leader of one major John Canoe group says it's been a long time coming. Jimmy Lamizic has more and a story you'll see on Just One Station. The sights and sounds of John Canoe will bring downtown NASA alive once again. With just a few months before the 2022 Boxing Day John Canoe Parade, I spoke to leader of the Shell Saxon superstars, Percy Vola Francis, who says after the two year break due to the global pandemic, anticipation for the next John Canoe Parade is high. The Hamans are far more excited than we are. I guess they can give us some of that enthusiasm to help us with this drive. Because, you know, coming back, after two and a half years, you know, trying to get oriented and trying to get back into the swing of things, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of a little different. The Shell Saxon superstars are the reigning champions of the 2019 Boxing Day and 2020 New Year's Day John Canoe Parades. And while the leader remains tight-lipped on what to expect from the group this year, he says they will be defending their crown. We are gearing up in full force now in terms to bring you the best that we can be. Now, John Canoe groups across New Providence recently received seed funding from the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture. However, Francis says this delay won't affect their preparations. We take the motto from the Boy Scouts, you know, we always prepared, you know, be prepared. JCNP officials say this year's parade will be in memory of those fallen John Canoeers over the past two years. Because these guys played major, major roles in very, very serious and particular areas. And so, Having to get those shoes filled again is going to be a task for us, but we are up for the task. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jamila Mizek. Thanks, Jamila. Now, the NFL season is off to a slow start for Bahamian wide receiver Mike Strawn and his Colts. Marcellus Hall joins us now with sports. Welcome to Our Sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. It's been a bit of a slow Unexpected start for Mike Strawn and the Indianapolis Colts. So far in the year, they have yet to tally a win, despite being projected to be one of the front runners in the AFC South. They have a big game coming up this weekend, but let's take a look and see what happened this past Sunday as they took on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Two of the NFL, a couple of good games on the agenda yesterday. Both of them, uh, on paper anyway, supposed to be pretty competitive. Uh, in the first match at the Buffalo Bills, they took down Tennessee Titans 41-7. to Ends up being the final score. Uh, what a game there for the Buffalo Bills as they dominated. They take on the Miami Dolphins this week. And also the Minnesota Vikings and Philadelphia Eagles going head-to-head. -head. Eagles behind Jalen Hurts get the win here 24-7. to Ends up being the final. Don't forget, you can indeed sign up for NFL Sunday Ticket courtesy of Rev. Don't miss out on being able to watch all the exciting matchups every giving weekend. And that is your look at sports here on this Tuesday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Thanks, Marcellus. Now, still ahead on our news tonight, a John Canoe Festival for the community. How culture will be on display this weekend. And where is Hurricane Fiona headed? And who will be most impacted? Our Greg Thompson has the extended weather outlook when our news returns. Got wireless dead zones at your house? 
How about endless buffering? Will you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is error. Error is not just in your Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Arrow. So why is you streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Arrow with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Aero from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash Aero or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. Get that glorious internet connection back in business within seconds with the new self-help modem reset. Just follow these very easy steps. Step one, call 601-2200 or 242-300-2200. Number two, select option three. Step three, select option two. Step four, enter your eight digit account number. Step five, follow the prompts. It's really that simple. Rev, you and us together. Welcome back to our news. Hurricane Fiona moving west-northwest after battering the Turks and Caicos Islands today. Greg brings us the latest from the Weather Center along with a look ahead as more action stirs up in the Atlantic. Greg? Thanks again, Natalia, and welcome back, everybody, for our second look of weather. Outside of tracking Fiona, which is a major uh, hurricane moving through the Turks and Caicos Islands, tropics getting busy. We also have tropical depression number eight, which formed earlier today, and it's out there in the open Atlantic, not really opposing um, any problems for anybody. Then there's this broad area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. The National Hurricane Center is continuing to monitor. Expected to move into the Caribbean Sea over the next couple of days. By the end of the week, it should be somewhere in the Caribbean, approaching the uh, Gulf of Mexico and the National Hurricane Center anticipates by that time this could become our next name system. So tropics getting very busy. Aside from that, we are still tracking Fiona, which is really doing a bit of a doozy across the Turks and Caicos Islands. Massive showers and thunderstorm activity across that area. They have a lot of rainfall. We got that in some of our, actually we have some webcam image out of Turks and Caicos Islands. Showers and thunderstorms affecting that area. And of course, if you look at the uh, ocean, very, very rough oceans out there. So. Once again, boaters across the entire island chain be asking you to remain in port as the system continues to track towards the east. And of course, the system will stay east of the islands. Some of the rain bands will be affecting portions of the Bahamas over the next day or so before the system turns more towards the north and northeast and races away from us. But the major impact will remain the swells and the rough seas out there. So once again, stay out of the waters if you have to. Uh, make sure you stay Onshore, no beaching or boating for the entire week. Boating forecast for the Northwest Bahamas tonight to tomorrow. A small craft advisory is in a place in place. North to northeast winds at 15 to 25 knots. You see it will be running 5 to 7 feet near shore and it will be up to 11 to 12 feet offshore. Low tide will be at 1126 tonight. For the central and southeast Bahamas, small craft operators are still urged to remain in port. Your winds will be shifting northwest to north. 20 to 30 knots, they will be gusting higher at times, and your seas will be running 6 to 9 feet near shore and up to 12 to 14 feet offshore in some large swells. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your extended forecast, showers, isolated showers, and thunderstorms will be moving into the northwest Bahamas. Most of the activity remaining across the central and southeast Bahamas, but Eventually, by the middle of the week, we expect things to be improving, and by the end of the weekend, conditions rather much better, but swells will continue to affect the islands when we're asking you boaters and beachgoers to stay out of the water at that time. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe night, everybody. Thanks, Greg. And the Valley Boys preparing to host Valley Fest on Saturday. Chairman of the Frontline Dance Association for the Valley Boys, John Williams, says the event, which will be held on Fort Charlotte, is a way to reconnect with the community after being away for two years due to COVID. Committee member Nakia Christie says arts and culture will be on full display. When we decided that we wanted to do more than just John Canoe. So we had the plan to do, you know, events and branch out and do a lot of charity work and stuff like that. And um, this event is not about even 
getting the Bay Street, you know, for costuming. You know, it's just to strengthen our social um, welfare arm of our group. So we're looking to build um, a community center at Claridge Road, and there we're hoping to do some really great things, outreach to the community, mentoring young Bahamians, and also trying to share our love of junk canoe. So we're really hoping that people will come out and support, because like I said, it's more than just Bay Street. Organizers say there will be a Junkanoo rush out. Money raised from the event will help the group continue its community outreach programs. Now, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Natalia Hall. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.